Hi guys, we are currently in the Black Square uh, analog conversion caravan. We're at Llano Municipal Airport in Central Texas, and we're going to fly down to Kerrville Municipal, the legacy home of Mooney Aircraft. <clears throat> and we're going to do this using VOR navigation without the GPS. However, we're going to do it using the RNAV radio that's built into the analog conversion caravan. The developer of this thing spent a lot of time developing all the code, custom code, for the KNS-80 RNAV. Uh, I've actually never run into anybody that's been using it. It's actually a very cool piece of equipment, and today I'm going to show you how to use it. So, <clears throat> here's our flight plan. We're going to go from Lano Municipal down to Kerrville, and across Fredericksburg, across the hill country. And we're going to use VOR navigation. Now, as you can see, it's not a very long flight. It's only 53 nautical miles. And we don't really have a good VOR on our flight plan. We have the Stonewall Vortac, uh, which is actually what we're going to use. If I go to the flight plan calculator in Little Nav Map, and I tell it to calculate my flight plan using VORs, what it computed was to use the Stonewall VOR, so we're going to fly to the VOR. We'll have radio navigation guidance all the way down there on the 176 inbound radio. <clears throat> then we're going to fly outbound the 227 radio, and that's going to take us directly to, well, to the marker anyway, of Kerrville Municipal Airport. Unfortunately, that takes us a little bit out of the way. So wouldn't it be better if we could fly direct? So you can see that this thing with the caravan performance file, it's going to take 23 minutes and we're going to burn 25 gallons of fuel. If I could fly direct, not using the VOR, then it would take 21 minutes and burn 23 gallons of fuel. Obviously direct saves you time and fuel. The problem is, in order to do this, I'm not going to have radio guidance using VORs. I mean, I could, fl I could fly it using, you know, dead reckoning. I could just fly 201 magnetic and kind of hope I stayed on this line. I could calibrate my position using radial and DME distances from this VOR all the way down. But that's kind of a pain in the neck. What would really be cool is if the authorities that be would have built the Stonewall VOR on my flight path, right? Because then I could fly to it and from it and end up at Kerrville. Fortunately, they built it over here near the little town, little bitty town of Stonewall, Texas. They did not build it over here near Fredericksburg. What the RNAV does <clears throat> is the RNAV will allow us to move this VOR basically wherever we want, as long as we can still pick it up. It does that synthetically. So it picks up the VOR, it looks at where it is, and then it will send course deviation indicator guidance to the CDI that we can then use to just fly the needle. So we'll be flying direct, we will have radio guidance the whole way, using a VOR that's not on our course. So like I said, it's very cool. So on a little nav map, what I want to do is I want to measure the distance from Stonewall. That will allow me to draw a line on the map. And as you can see here, why don't I put it oh right about there. Two, two, six, seven, thirteen nautical miles. So, two, six, seven radio off this VOR, and I want to move it thirteen miles. That will put it on my course line. Now, something you'll notice is that. I go back to the original kinked flight plan. You'll see something interesting. You'll see that um, I don't want waypoint one. Delete that. I want the VOR. So I want to add the vortex to the flight plan. So you see me flying 180 magnetic due south out of Lano. But you'll notice this 176 down here. So it's telling me I've got to be on the 176 inbound radial 
in order to fly 180 south. Okay, well that doesn't make sense, right? Because why wouldn't I fly the 180 radio? And the reason is that the Stonewall Vortac, or Stonewall VOR, is calibrated for an 8 degree declination, but it's actually at a position in this part of Texas where there's a 3.8 degree east declination. These things are supposed to point to magnetic north, but magnetic north moves around. And guess what? They don't adjust the settings on the VORs very often. And in this case, we're about 4 degrees off. So you can see that 4 degrees here, 180 magnetic on the 176 radio. That's a little bit weird, but you'll find that all VORs are off a little bit. <clears throat> so we're going to want a course of 180 magnetic, and we are going to not fly the 176 radio. We're going to fly this one, remember? So if I go back to the old course, we're going to fly 201 magnetic, but that's going to be the 197 radio off of our moved VOR. So 197 out inbound, 197 outbound, 201 magnetic heading, and that will take us directly over Kerrville. So let's hop in the plane and set it up. So we're in our caravan, it's off. I'm going to turn on the master switch, and we'll turn on part of our radios. Then we'll go to the down here to the KNS-80 GPS, or excuse me, KNS-80 RNAV. <clears throat> now this thing could be an RNAV, which is what we're going to use it for, or it could just be a plain old um, navigation radio. That's what this does. It's either the VOR means it's just going to be a nav radio, and it's going to drive this CDI, when this is over here, as if it were a nav radio. If we set this to RNAV, it's going to do RNAV stuff. <laughs> um, you can have RNAV in route, or you can have RNAV approach. All that does is it determines how sensitive the needle is. If you're using it in approach mode, you could put a VOR right on the end of a runway um, and essentially use it as a localizer. You want the needle to be a little more sensitive so you're a little more accurate flying it. We're just going to have it en route VOR, so we'll leave it on en route, which is the default density and a certain number of degrees per, per ball of, of deviation here. So, get this going. So this actually has four waypoints in it, <clears throat> and you can have it display to use one, display one. You can have it display waypoint two, which is the information up here, display waypoint three, display waypoint four, all while still navigating off waypoint one. This allows you to set it up while you're flying and, and flying to this first waypoint you've got entered. We only have one for this flight, so we are only going to be one and use one. This little data button is where you set the frequency of the VOR you want to move, the radio you want to move it on, and the distance you want to move it. So 113.8, if I go back to the map, we're moving 113.8, so we don't have to reset this, and we are going to move it on the 267 radio for 13 miles. So we want to go to the radio 267 and data 13 miles. And you would move this little knob here. I've already got it set up. But this is where you set the distance. This is where you set the radio. And use one. It's now move the VOR for us. And if we were in the air, we could use the new VOR location. And that's it. It's that simple. So we'll go back up here, and let's get this thing running. We'll turn on the fuel. we got the master on, generator on, fuel pump to normal, and start. Get some lights. Wait till we have a good motoring speed. The blade's turning. I usually wait to around 20% in too. Oh, there's max motoring. Fuel on. We have light off. And we 
turn the starter off, and we're good to go. And go to flight, launch flaps, turn the rest of the instruments on. And we'll display the map. <clears throat> You'll notice that there is no line, because we're doing this the old-fashioned way. So let's get set up. We're going to want the 201 magnetic, so I will set that on the heading. We will fly that right after takeoff. 201 heading. Now we're going to set our radial for 197. Remember, we have to adjust a little bit because of the miscal maybe miscalibration is a little harsh, but the way the VOR is set up. So at 197 on the OBS and a heading at 201. We can go over to the autopilot. We'll fly today at uh, I don't know 3,000 feet. That'll clear all the stuff, and we're ready to go. at a thousand. We're in the hill country, so it's going to be a little bumpy on the, on the ground, but we should be about 2,000 feet above everything. Do a Southwest Airlines style takeoff. See, we're already picking up the VOR. Notice how we're on the line, or close to the line. We will wait until we get it solid. Back off to 1500 on the torque. Engine the autopilot. Got a heading mode. Flaps up. So our CDI is bouncing around a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to fly it by the heading bug. Eventually, it'll stop bouncing around once we get a good signal. Gotta prop go the right speed. Looks like our CDI has a little bit of a left bias. Okay. Our 
remember, you can't use the DME. You're going to have to check your RNAV because your RNAV will tell you how far. So we're 30.9 nautical miles, 40, from our moved VORs. So when that hits zero, we will cross over the synthetic VOR in 13 minutes. pretty good. Maybe a little bit of a half a notch to the right. I'll go one degree to the right. I'm moving the heading bug using my Bravo throttle so you won't, be, you won't see me click on this. altitude, we're at out hold, and we're speeding up nicely, we'll do about this speed, we're 11 minutes from the VOR, now keep in mind, we're not actually going to fly over the VOR, we are going to fly over the calculated VOR position, so we're not going to have that cone of silence above the VOR, we'll be flying along, hopefully on the radial, if I do my job right, and this two flag will just flip to a front flag, Instantly, you will never lose the signal. I don't know if I would normally fly this fast, but I'll try to get this boring part over with. Enjoy the hill country. Job holding the needle against wind. Now, if we were in flight and we crossed over one of our synthetic VORs, we would simply display waypoint 2, and if that's the next one, we would then click the use button. This would become a 2, and we'd be flying using the second move to VOR. Of course, we don't have that. We're only using one. So I'll just roll this over to one, and we're back to our 113.8 that we've moved. down, hit zero, we should see the needle flip in a couple of more minutes here, well, seven more minutes. Guess I should turn 
on the transponder at some point. Not that it matters. Nice. The developer told me by a forum post that, you know, in the real plane, when you put the HSI CDI, which is this thing, when you put this thing on RNAV, the autopilot, when coupled to NAV1, should follow the CDI on automatically in NAV mode over here. Um, unfortunately, to code that is uh, difficult thanks to uh, Microsoft and Asobo coding. And apparently what he told me is the working title modifications have made it worse. He doesn't know how to do it. So you have to wind up holding the needle centered yourself. But you can still use the guidance provided by the RNAV. this fly for a minute, go back to the map, we can look at, we're coming up, doing a good job actually, we're coming up on the crossover point, and so if we do the same thing with Kerrville, and we draw a distance marker, we put that here, we can see that Kerrville is 16.3 nautical miles from our synthetic VOR. So when we're flying outbound, when the RNAV says we're 16.3 from the moved VOR, we should be at Kerrville's airport. And we're perfectly on the line. Which makes sense because our needle is perfectly centered. Again, all getting guidance that VOR, which is way over here. This is the VOR we're actually using. We moved it over here and we're flying to it.
good on this. Flying it in heading mode with the heading bug, doing so in a way that keeps this needle centered. So the RNAV is guiding us. Almost there, half a mile to go. All we're going to see here is we're going to see the flip. And I'll switch to the map. There's the flip. I switch to the map. You can see we just overflew our synthetic location. Now we're looking for 16.3 nautical miles to Curvo. Again, we're counting up now because we are flying away from our VOR location. See, we're tracking 200. Remember, we're on track 201. That tells me we're probably going to be drifting to the left a little bit. Are we? Eh, not really. Maybe a little teeny weeny bit. We'll add one degree. supposed to be using this thing, but, you know. As long as we keep this thing reasonably centered, and certainly within one tick mark is fine. We're good to go. If I remember right, I, I did a practice flight on this. This little white thing is a building on the airport, confirming that we're we're doing it right. Looks like it's got a little right bias. Estimated 16.3s, so another nine something miles. Nine miles. Needle looks good.
Jersey Airport. Again, even if I didn't have this, I have the, the center needle. Oh, I want to know we're headed in the right direction. There's one of the runways coming into view. We're looking for 16.3. We're at 12. Obviously, at this point, we would normally conclude that we've done a good job and we've flown direct. No problem finding the runway. Finding the airport, I should say. look and when this hits 16.3 I'm going to pause the game and we'll see how we did there it is now we go to the map and we're I don't know what do you call that quarter mile off anyway that's how you do it that's what an RNAV does put ourselves directly over the airport. And there's the airport. Go back to the map just to scroll out to show you what we flew. Left Lano, follow the magenta line crossed our synthetic VOR, which is actually over here, and flew directly over the middle of Kerrville Airport. That's how an RNAV works, and keep in mind you can do that with up to four waypoints, and then overwrite one, two, and three as you progress your flight. So if you're flying cross-country, rather than zigzagging between the VORs in order to have guidance, you can follow a direct route. That's it. Hope you learned something.